morning, good afternoon, and good evening, AGA members. I'm Chris Garlock, Managing Editor of the AGA E-Journal, joined once again by Michael Redman, Nine Don Professional. In today's episode, Michael's going to review Game 20 of the AlphaGo Self-Play series. And as always, before we get started, I want to thank all our AGA members. And if you'd like to support this content as well, please consider joining the American Go Association at usgo.org. So, uh, uh, Alpha Go Twenty. We're just uh, we're just cooking along here, eh, Michael? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was trying to provoke something there. I yeah. Well, we All still right. have thirty games to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so when we get to twenty-five, you'll be you'll, you'll get well, a, you'll get a little excited. Sort there. of halfway there, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. And then I'll remember the extra five games. You know. I wasn't gonna say anything about the extra five <laughs> games. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, we're going to have some some news about the uh, the AlphaGo book soon, but I think we'll we'll hold off for another week or two on that. But uh, sure. just to, just to let folks know that uh, we are making progress, so mm-hmm. more to come on that. All right, uh, what is the uh, what's the overall picture on on this game that we're going to look at? Okay, we're going to see a, a kind of an AlphaGo move to start with. Um, one of the moves that became popular in human play because of AlphaGo. And then um, we're going to see a, a variation from a Joseki that's been around for hundreds of years in human play. Cool. So it's, um, we're, I'm going to get to compare that with the great masters of the golden age of Japanese go. Nice. And, and then it's look, looking peaceful for a while, and then uh, in the middle game to the end of the game, it gets a bit confusing. So it gets exciting at the end. And we're going to see a, a very rare case in which the result is different depending on which rule set you use. So the Japanese rules uh-huh. actually give a different, um, not only a different points result, but um, actually the win-loss result is reversed also. It's a very rare case. Wow. So it's going to be interesting. Okay. Let's get mm-hmm. to it. Okay. So we start the game. Um, and this is a point where like, um, we have all sorts of moves that can be played. And before AlphaGo, I, I marked up the board a bit here to talk about that because before AlphaGo, um, the most popular move was the small Sumari at A. Mm-hmm. Like it was supposed to be the best move that uh, secured that corner territory. And then, of course, in the Master Series, AlphaGo was playing those shoulder hits all the time and people got a bit reluctant to play these small Sumaris. And so the big Sumari at D was a move that actually the Master version liked to play. And then, of course, B and C also. These are two moves that survive, sort of, because they, they're they still played by AIs and they're also played by humans. So so B and C are also moves that have survived but are not as popular as they used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and A is all but disappeared. It's really, it's um, it used to be by far the most popular move, and now just about no one plays it. Yeah, I've played it many times, but uh, I won't be doing that now. You, what, <laughs> what about uh, E? I see E all up there in the, in the I corner. sort of added on E at the end. Um, it It's not really happening um, at move five when they have three, four points um, in the case of the self-played games. Right. Um, it's something that's um, more um, prominent in the zero series. Mm-hmm, so it's mm-hmm. it's a kind of a zero move, although uh, this version of AlphaGo does play early 3-3 invasions. Um, it usually does it with uh, star point openings, I think. So right. E is a move that um, zero started to play, and some humans are playing, and it's starting to catch on a little bit. Um, I guess I'm coming around uh, gradually, and I, I might eventually decide I'm ready to play it. <laughs> I want to be the first to know. <laughs> okay, so... Um, so actually, uh, this is the move that I have played. In, um, let's see. This is actually up to this point. It's identical to a game that um, we have a video of it. It's uh, I think it's uh, Redmond Reviews number six, mm-hmm. if I recall correctly, against mm-hmm. Kobayashi Koichi. And in this, in my game against Kobayashi Koichi, I played this pincer, which is the most popular, probably still the most popular human move. Um, White usually plays. Um, there's a lot, white can do stuff with the local situation in the lower right corner, um, but it doesn't really have very good results. So uh, the most popular move now is for white to dodge to the right side and we get something like this. So this is what happened with my game against Kobayashi Koichi, the great uh, player um, from, uh, uh, well, he was uh, dominated the go scene a uh, couple of decades away uh, uh, before now, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can find that in... Uh, 
Redmond Reviews number six, if I recall correctly. It's, it's, it's one of the Redmond Reviews. And so it's a fairly recent game of mine. And it's what people like to do nowadays. But um, AlphaGo didn't do that here. AlphaGo played the kick, which is a move that um, was seen first in the Master Series in which AlphaGo beat 60, well, won 60 games against top humans. It played some of the people repetitively. So I, I should watch myself when I almost say it beat 60 humans because right. some of them were playing more than once. It was, um, a lot, it was a lot of people. It was a lot of people. And it was all top players. Like, right. Um, just about everyone who played that was in the top 30 right. in ranking. And that's world ranking. Mm -hmm. um, and so the idea behind this kick, which is supposed to be a bad move that allows white to play a three space extension. And interesting, you note that white doesn't do that. Why don't we just make a variation? Um, just looking at the lower right corner's position here, um, this is supposed to make it safe for white to play this uh, three space extension. And there's an issue with the weak point that black has here, which is gonna come up in this game later. Um, but just the fact that white gets the three, uh, the three space extension is supposed to be good for white. But of course, uh, sorry, that was a click off. In this case, when black gets to press from, uh, from the corner here, white has a lot of stones on the third line. So white's gonna end up with a very low position here. And um, this is what pros would call over-concentrated. Like um, black could just continue with a like a, kind of a dosaku-like maneuver here, maybe, and just playing all these forcing moves. And then uh, what a human player would now do would be to play on the on the left side like this to to make use of the wall. Hmm. But interesting, AlphaGo doesn't really like to do that. But um, uh, this is the kind of thing where black would be forcing white to be playing a lot of stones on the lower side, and um, we're beginning to think that this mo this stone is one more stone than white really needs to surround that territory. So right. white's um, not being that efficient here. And so this is supposed this kind of thing is supposed to be good for black. And it sort of explains why white is playing high, because black is going to press here anyway. Um, and when this happens, it's it's good for white at least to have a stone on the fourth line instead mm -hmm. of on the third line. And um, just looking at um, there's one way you can look at this is you can say that white is still playing a lot of moves on the lower side to surround that one territory. Um, so one would like to think it's over concentrated and um, it does resemble a lot of stuff that the great Hoimbo Dosaku that's, that's also three or 400 years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I, I should really have these dates, um, <laughs> know my dates, but it's somewhere around there. Um, uh, he, he liked to do this kind of thing. And so it resembles that. And so there's a tendency to think it's really good for black, but it's probably about even actually like black. Um, this is where I, I sort of differ from AlphaGo um, because this is where AlphaGo jumps into the three, three point, which is not the intuitive way to use um, this position on, on the lower in the lower right corner. Uh, sorry, lower left corner. Usually when you get a wall here, and you know that you want white to surround the lower side. Black's willing to give the lower side to white. Um, usually you would have black pushing here and maybe pushing a bit more and then playing an approach to the corner like this, a Kakari and then an extension on the left side. And so pushing at A and then um, making a position on the left side to make use of that wall and make sure it doesn't turn into a weak group um, instead of a wall. Like you have to be careful with walls like this because if, if they get isolated, they can become a weak group. They don't really have eyes yet. So it's really important for this wall to be connected up with some kind of a position on the left side. Mm -hmm. So that's how, that's how I process this. And you notice I put a C on the board too. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a point where at some point in this sequence starting with A, Black could think of pushing through at C and putting a cut in. Like I did that in the other variation that right. I was showing. Right. Um, this this variation where mm -hmm. I have black push. It, it's a common technique to push through at C here um, and put a cut in to get a, an extra forcing move, maybe from the corner or maybe from above. Um, but that puts black in Dummer's Murray and sometimes it loses points in the corner if white plays from the corner side. So there's pros and cons to this move at C. Um, so I think that I, I just left it at there. I'm not going to make a variation for you because in this state, um, it's sort of questionable whether it's going to work or not. Mm -hmm. And I think that stronger players would probably have fun trying to figure out when they want to play a push through and cut and see it. But I'm not going to recommend it. Right, because uh, the, the timing is tricky, right? The timing is tricky. 
and you have to be able to follow through and make it work. Um, and it's, there's some potential to do that, but it's, it's going to be very tricky. You have to be able to um, envision a variation about 20, 20 moves into the future of the game. So um, it's, it's something for someone, um, someone who's um, going to be able to do it, should be able to figure it out for himself, is what I'm trying to say. So I'm not going to tell you how to do that. You just laid down a challenge for the viewers. They can they can take it uh, or not. People who want to do it, they can they can try it. But I'm not going to take responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you okay. have been warned. <laughs> so uh, does a very AlphaGo thing, and jumps into the three three point. And. Um, so this is a period in AlphaGo's. Um, it's really I, I, interesting. I'm sorry, I got I to go back a sec. So I mean, you just showed us, you know, and your variation made a whole lot of sense to me in terms of, you know, yeah, that that just looks right. So oh, AlphaGo right, yeah. just completely ignores that. Mm -hmm. Well, um, one explanation for that um, is that the reason that I like to do this kind of thing is because as I was saying, I might as well mark, mark the wall too. Like this wall here that Black has, although it's an impressive wall, um, it doesn't actually have eye shape yet. Right. And so um, one of my, a part of my strategy would be to connect it up to the left side so that it doesn't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. And this really, this is really the basic um, idea behind making moyos because when you have a thickness a thick shape that is also surrounding some territory and is alive, then you don't have to do this kind of thing. But when you have a thick shape or an outside wall that is actually not alive, this is the wise thing to do. And that's, that's sort of the basic human knowledge. And that's how I would process this. And it seems to work well with me. But the point is that um, AlphaGo in general, and I've noticed this in a lot of AlphaGo's games, it doesn't think of this group as a weak group. And so AlphaGo is saying it's not a weak group after all. And that's because uh, Black has, in some cases, Black has this attachment at the mm -hmm. three, three point. Um, why don't we just make a ver uh, just a variation for the video here? Um, it's sort of hard to make it work in the actual game. But when Black pushes through here, um, there's, there's a push through and cut. Like if White does something silly like this, there's a push through and cut here. Um, after which Black can right. uh, capture no ladder. So this would be bad for White. Um, and so if white does something like this, which is sort of a Joseki move, black gets to play something like this and we'll have a living shape in the corner. Hmm. Um, otherwise black could just connect. That's another way to make a living shape in the corner, but black's right. going to be a lot. But so black has the option of doing that. And the point is then when white black is not staking anything on the left side, um, this move from white, the kick here is not going to be a forcing move because black hasn't really invested anything in the general area. Right, right. And so Black is treating this as a group that is has potential eyes, and actually it's sort of light, the way AlphaGo plays it. So it's a very different way of using this uh, Joseki here, this Joseki shape, sort of as a light and fairly resilient group, instead of um, calling it a wall that should build a moyo. Hmm. Okay, and, all right. And I've seen it work fairly well for AlphaGo, so I, I guess it's a pretty valid. It's it was um, a new idea, really. It was a new idea for um, Hue and Pros, but it, it's working fairly well, and I, I can understand. I can uh, see it working and sort of understand how that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I, I don't disagree with that. And so this is the night move. Uh, this version of AlphaGo um, actually plays the Hane on top of Black. This one, um, pretty often. So it, it, this version of AlphaGo sometimes plays this still, but it also can play this one, obviously. So it, it's kind of, um, and it's interesting to note that Zero almost always plays the night move here. Um, but um, the master version, and I, this is a, an advanced version of master, but um, it, it doesn't always play the night's move, but in this case it did. And black pushes through. So this is very similar to what top pros are playing now because it's, it's become very popular. And white just uh, plays away. So this is a big move, and um, it has the advantage of taking away the option of making a life in the corner with this attachment here. So it is it is potentially putting some pressure on black, and it's stop stopping that variation where black was pushing at the same point. So mm -hmm. stopping black. And so it does make this uh, position that white has on the lower side, it gives it some potential to spread out into the center. 
in fact, in this game, we're going to see it spreading out into the center. So um, there's, and, and it also, um, because black does not have the option of playing that attachment, let's just do that as a little variation. When black attaches now, um, white can push through, or white could just play here. And now pushing through and cutting is not going to be so successful. And so it's taking a lot of the effectiveness, uh, effectiveness away from that attachment. And OK, so at this point, I've added a variation actually to show what options black has in the upper left corner, because white's not finished the Joseki here. Um, obviously, to extend here would be the Joseki move that everyone knows. And there's some other variations that I'll probably go into in some of my other videos, probably already have. But um, in this position, white played away. It means that uh, black's strongest uh, um, option is to cut here. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're watching pro games, you're going to be see this happening in some of the games. So white extends, uh, black curls once, and extends. And this is where white has a few options. Yeah. Um, because white can stand on the upper side. But in this case, white will probably play this, which is a kind of a forcing move. Allowing the Hane in the corner would be, uh, at B19 would be um, pretty strong for, it would be a big Hane. And uh, let's just do that as a variation. Like if black plays something on the outside, um, white gets the Hane and also gets to play this is Sente. Mm. So that yeah. would be, uh, not only would the upper side, the white group on the upper <laughs> side have a pretty good eye space, but the, the left side group would be able to make a base too. So black almost always plays the Tari. So it's a kind of a, it's not 100% forcing in that it's not going to kill the black group, but it's almost always forcing. Um, and then white gets to jump here. And the upper side is not going to fall apart exactly. So um, we're going to get into this kind of fight. It actually looks pretty even. Um, so it could have black could have played this way. Um, but in this ver variation, black will have to worry about, of course, that uh, position in the center where black has a relatively weak group. Uh, white's going to follow up with something on the upper side. And uh, white has a weak group on the left side, but black also has to eventually worry about the group in the lower left corner. So both sides will have a lot of weak groups in this variation. Um, it's about even. But in the game, uh, black played the Tari. This is the other way. So like if you like to uh, mix things up, then you can cut here if you're a fighting player. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you have the feeling you want to keep things simple, and uh, one reason for that could be the Black's group in the lower left corner. The, when Black plays this way, um, and this extending down on the second line here is very important because it gives white, it, it gives Black the whole corner and stops white from playing the Hane at the same point. So it, it finishes Black's shape there. It finishes Black's territories, so to say. And by making a strong group in this corner, it means that now Black doesn't really have to worry about about this group because it's sort of reinforced by that strong black group right next to it. And uh, of course, if white ends up surrounding the upper side, then this move that black has just played is uh, this move on the second line here is going to be taking away the territory from underneath. So mm -hmm. it's um, big in territory. It's also setting up to attack this white group because white doesn't have any eyes now. So this is another example of a wall that doesn't have eyes. And a human player would be worried about that, but of course AlphaGo doesn't. Um, so white jumps here. Again, this is expanding into the center. This is the one area that white has, but it's a very, uh, there's no invasion. There's no possible invasion for black. Um, and it has potential to spread out into the center. So this is actually, although it's only one territory that white has, it's a very um, a strong territory, you might say. It's a, it's a useful territory. And black has the upper left corner and the lower right corner, but doesn't really have very much apart from that. Um, and, and this is where AlphaGo likes to pincer that wall. And it only works because black has such a strong position in the corner. But it works pretty well in this position. But in general, AlphaGo seems to like to play this three space pincer against what um, some people might think is a, a big wall that you should be keeping away from. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's, in this position, it's actually more of a weak group. There's some potential for black to attack black, that group. So um, black is crowding white and taking away white's option of making some eyes on the side. So it's, it's a very aggressive move here. And white finally plays this move. So this is uh, where we get into that Joseki um, or after Joseki situation that um, has actually been played for, um, for several hundred years. 
And as far as I know, it was played in the in the Edo era, which is the golden era of Beaufort, Japan. Um, so it was played by all the great players um, who are in history, like Hoimbo, um, Suwa uh, played played this a lot with White, um, probably Joa, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if Dosaku played it, but he might be a bit early. So it was mm -hmm. um, at least 100 years ago. And um, this is really troublesome for Black, but um, just to show what happens if Black tries to <coughs> yeah. back off. Um, in this case, White will play here, and um, White will cut on the second line. And it turns out, even in this position, Black will capture the cutting stone. So that's why I have White cutting towards the corner, um, because White wants to be forcing from outside. That White will stands to gain more from uh, playing forcing moves from outside. So White actually just what, let's add a sub variation just for the video. White doesn't want to be giving Black this thick position on the outside um, in order to be taking the corner, because this would actually give Black a superior result. Mm. The territory in the corner is not worth it. And so that's why white is cutting on the corner side. It's a pretty good rule of thumb for black to be capturing the cutting stone. Uh, because, of course, this would be a completely different story, um, even if white just plays here. This would be completely different from what I, what I was just showing you, because black doesn't have any eyes. And so black will capture this, and white will play a honey on top. And you can see white's uh, lower side uh, structure sort of um, spreading out into the center here. Black would like to be playing a, a stone high so as to uh, counter White's potential in the center. But White has this uh, tesuji, it's a shape move. Uh, and you can see Black's getting pushed around here. Like Black doesn't want to allow White to curl around on the center. Like this would just give White, um, even if White uh, plays the more vulgar move of playing here, this, this just is giving White a lot of thickness in the center. But of course, this kind of fight is also gonna be bad for Black. It's, Black's getting pushed around. And so this is not really an option for Black, um, especially in this case where White is uh, stands to gain a lot from spreading out into the center from the lower side. So Black plays here, and White plays here, and Black connects in the corner. So this, this sequence um, is the most, it's sort of main line um, in professional, human professional games too. And mm -hmm. it's, it, it's pretty much forced in this game position. So white crawls, black plays. Uh, uh, now this is unusual. This honey is sort of unusual. Um, sometimes it turns into a good move, but it's so um, subtle that I, I'm going to have trouble explaining that part. But um, and then and then the honey is again is the most uh, popular move, and black extends. So this is actually a position where um, AlphaGo did not play the move that was considered standard. Mm -hmm. And actually, White has two ways, um, two ways to continue. And I'm going to start with this move, which is it's it, it's what could be called the standard move. It's very common. And if Black will answer it here, um, this is sort of a valuable exchange for White because White gets some extra extra space here. And the point is that if Black cuts here, then uh, this is bad, obviously. Um, I mean, it's good for White. So um, if black extends, then eventually white's going to be able to connect here and white will have some eye space on the side. So that's the idea. Um, there is a variation where black tries to counter that by playing here, but you see in the process of doing that, black is killing the corner. So in this variation, white's gonna be able to capture the whole corner. Wow, 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 wow. So this is, um, this is actually not very good for black because it's, it's wow. just a dead corner. It's a disaster, yeah. Um, and so when white plays this move, um, although you would usually expect black to play here, in this game, there's a kind of an issue with, uh, with co-threats, uh, which makes it really good for black to just ignore white's honey and play on the outside. And this is already a bit unusual. Like th this, this move itself is pretty much mainstream um, in the history of professional go. But in this case, I've decided it's probably bad for white because uh, black's going to play here. And just about whatever you do in this position, it's going to turn into a ko. But um, the way to do it, the, the good suji way to do it is to play this uh, peep here on the first line. Um, and a black will connect. And then white has to back up here. This is an interesting point where mm -hmm. if white gets uh, too hasty, 
then this will just kill the white group. So white has to take this, uh, white has no place to push the two black stones. Wow. So white has to back up once and then can play the honey in the corner. And this is still going to be a call, whatever you do, but uh, black will probably just throw in and take the one stone. You can see black is getting a little extra profit on the outside while setting up this call and can throw in here to make a call. And so locally, like this would be a call in, in the early part of the game is usually good for the side who's going to win it. So the taking side is okay, usually. Um, but in this case, black has some co-threats here. And the point is that the co-threats that black is going to play in the lower left corner are actually in themselves, they're, they're sort of useful moves, which will help black settle the corner position. Hmm. White, white also has some co-threats. Uh, white's co-threats in the upper left <clears throat> corner, now these co-threats are really bad moves. So, so they're moves that are very painful for white to play. So as the co continues, and you can see it's a pretty big co, it's almost 30 points. Um, in some of the... No, I wondered if you could just remind folks of, of uh, you know, I think sometimes people can have a hard time telling, you know, what's a good co-threat, what's a bad, well, you know, what's a point-losing co-threat? Uh, okay. Um, well, I'm going to show you in the process how Black's co-threats are working, but you can see that this co-threat that White plays, it's expanding Black's territory um, when Black answers it. Black's getting some extra territory. And as the co-threats in the upper left continue, you're going to see Black's position just getting stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. And so they're co-threats that are, are forcing moves, but they are moves that uh, improve your opponent's shape or make your shape worse. Whereas um, in the lower left corner, I think just going through the sequence will be the best example. Um, you can see that Black is um, getting this forcing move uh, the ultimate forcing move here is, is the reward that black gets for playing these moves. And that if white answers that, um, black is already uh, getting some potential life. Like white will not answer it because white sort of run out of co-threats at this point. But um, the point is that um, even if white does something like this now, black can always make eyes in the corner. So this whole sequence um, starting from, from this move has actually given Black the option of making eyes in the corner, mm. which is which is pretty important. And so there's some positive value to the quote that Black played. But uh, to get back to the main variation in which I've had Black, um, I've had White taking the co and finishing the co here. Uh, this trade is pretty even, apart from the fact that White's wool in the upper left is really in trouble now. And you can right. see how all of those co threats that White played, uh, all of these moves, um, giving Black these outside stones are really making it difficult because everything white does towards the left side is going to be, um, black's just going to ignore it. Black has this wall of, uh, this solid wall to which black can push the white stones. So black doesn't have to answer white when white, for instance, continues with a push here. Uh, black could just play something again from the outside and white's going to have a lot of trouble making life for this group. And so that's the point I was trying to make. The co, the co here is just very um, problematic for white. But actually, th so this is the move that you see in a lot of the historical games. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's another move, uh, this cut here, which uh, is sort of interesting because the ladder is bad. Um, but it's a move that I remember seeing in a top professional game, and I couldn't find it. It wasn't in the database. So it's sort of wow. interesting. Um, maybe I'm not remembering correctly, but I'm pretty sure I saw it one of the great uh, players play it. Maybe it's a kind of an obscure record that I had in paper, uh, but it hadn't been transcribed to the internet or something. Interesting. I couldn't find it. Um, but cutting here, the point of this move is that it enables white to play this crawl with sente. So it's avoiding the potential of black closing white in with this move. White cuts first, black captures the stone, white can crawl once. Uh, of course, Black's getting the um, some profit by capturing the ladder. Black will extend, and now White can play the Hane without having to worry about that co thing. Black will answer here. White can crow once more. And now White's alive. Black is not completely alive. Black will have to uh, come down here. And this is a kind of a conditionally alive shape. It's, it's, it's sort of difficult for White to attack it um, because for the time being, White has to worry about this cut here. So any attack on this black group would be after white. For instance, white could play the squeeze here at some time. Um, 
but the squeeze is not always forcing. Let's just see uh, how I finish this version. I have white played here and then invade in the upper side. Um, so white has lost something by cutting at A, but white has gotten a good position locally after that. Um, and I was talking about the squeeze here. This squeeze here, um, if we have white squeeze, um, I'm not very sure that black would be answering this actually, but um, having the squeeze would set up um, a kind of a smiggle position in the in the corner. For instance, white could uh, white could play this way to make a kind of a call. Or, or um, this is one of the ways to make a call. Um, so this kind of thing could happen, provided white has um, gotten rid of the potential cut here. Something like this could potentially work. Mm -hmm. And so th there's some danger there, but in actual practice, black's probably probably not going to. Um, black could just play away at this point, and it's going to take some time for white to get to that call. So I'd say it's about even. I, I, I'm calling this variation about even, and I think this is how white should have played. And it's a pity I couldn't find the game record, but I think it's something that human players, top human players, have played before. Um, so maybe it's an example of how our um, accumulated knowledge um, or reason knowledge, you might say, is, is better than what AlphaGo did because uh, AlphaGo is white here, sort of got into a bit of trouble. What AlphaGo did was AlphaGo uh, crawled on the second line and this get, allows black to play. And the whole point be behind uh, the two variations I was showing with white playing here once to get the crawl in before playing the Hane or white playing the Hane to start with. The whole point is that this point is a key point in the corner. It's a vital point. And it's really important because it expands black space in the corner and it's going to make it really difficult for white to kill that corner. It also, you can see it takes away white's eye space. So it's it's a vital point as far as eye space is concerned. And the fact that black is, and the uh, idea behind this move was that if black had tried to do that, uh, then white would be able to push through here or even play an Atari, but pushing through here is good enough. Wow. And so it, it, black doesn't have time to do it in this variation. But in the game, of course, uh, black does have time to do it. And this is not looking good for white. So white has to crawl a bit. And then white goes after the corner. Um, and black just covers here. Now the corner is not dead. Uh, for instance, if white plays, a lot of players would want to play here. But this is actually a bad move. Um, <laughs> It, it's quite often this is the key point, the vital point in the corner. Right. In this case, right. right. Um, in this case, uh, black can just connect here. And if black gets to connect at B, this is going to be a five stone, um, a five stone dead shape. It's going to be a five stone nakade, is what we call. And that's eight moves. So it's it, you subtract the two white stones and you get six moves. Um, so black, and then there's two outside liberties. So if black gets to connect at B, black's going to win by something like four moves. Um, in this uh, fight to capture. And so white has to throw in at B. Let's just do that. But again, it's 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 a call that even after white, like even if white wins it, white's only managed to win the semi by one move. Like uh, later on in the game, um, if black plays here, white, you can see that white's still lose, winning the semi by only one move. And so that means that all of black's moves on the outside are gonna squeeze white. And it's not really that much of a territory even after White's um, given up so much in the lower left corner to win this goal. This is just a losing position for White. Hmm. And so this is this would be a mistake. And this move is a Tesuji that you can find in Tesuji problems. Um, you can find them in, in, in Smigo problems. This is the correct move. So this is locally the good move. If Black, uh, Black actually played away. Um, but if Black plays here, now we have a shape that is very short in liberties. Like black could play um, play here, and white plays here, black plays here, white plays here. Uh, let's just finish the semi. Um, you can see that now black has just lost it. Wow, um, clap. And so when white crawls, and of course if white gets to play here first, now white's gonna be attacking from the corner. So this is even worse. Um, so there's a point there where white could have just played away and it's already dead. Wow. And so uh, this crawl here is a key point. So when black plays the next move, black's going to play here. And so this is the correct local move. Let's just go through the variation to show what the local position is, what's going to happen with it. Because as always, AlphaGo is just going to leave it for a while. 
Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter whether that black group lives or dies. Not to AlphaGo. But what's happening locally here is uh, we play this sequence. And again, you can see this again, uh, a placing a, another placement on the first line. This is where Black would play to extend Black's liberties. This would give Black a lot of resilience. It would be very bad for White. So again, this is the correct move. And uh, in this case, Black takes an eye in the corner and White takes the side. Um, when Black plays the honey here, um, locally that sort of finishes the position. It's a, it's a seki. Mm-hmm. Both sides have an eye, and it's going to take time for them to fill the inner dame. So it's, it's, a, it's going to be a seki. Um, the drawback for this seki is that Black has to hang on to that, uh, those marked stones. I should, mark, right. I should have marked right. both of them. Black yeah. has to hang on to these two stones to keep it a seki. So it's, that's a drawback of making a seki. Um, <laughs> and that's a reason for Black to sort of play dead at this point. But Black, you can see that Black has got a lot back in the upper right area. Um, so even though Black is um, acting as if it doesn't care whether this group lives or not, it, and it, it doesn't really matter at this point because Black's already gotten a lot back in the upper right. And this is actually uh, a good game for Black. It's good for Black already. And so it was really interesting up to this point. There's going to be a, an area where I don't have very many comments on the game after this because it's, it's a bit bland. They're playing fairly peacefully. It's very unusual for AlphaGo. You sound so Black is, <laughs> It's going to change later in the game. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I'm going to be satisfied. Uh, okay. So, so it was a lot of excitement here. But um, at this point, the center, the upper right area for Black is really big. The center is going to be big for White. So they're both trying to map out territories in those areas. And both of those areas are more important than whatever might happen in the lower right corner. And as I was saying, um, it, it should be, locally, it's going to be a seki. And you're going to see the, in the game, the players will be um, eventually setting that up. But it's going to be a bit different, as often happens with AlphaGo. And so now white cuts. Now, um, whoa, 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 whoa. actually, a strong player will just sort of want to cut here anyway. Uh-huh. And it's it's going to be super difficult to calculate what exactly is going to happen with this cut. Yeah. Because, um, it's not really going to work. Um, but as, as far as White is concerned, um, any strong player would have the feeling that even if this cutting stone is going to get captured, uh, White should have potential to get some forcing moves from the left or maybe from the center. Um, if White can get some extra Aji here, maybe it's going to change what happens in the, in the upper right corner. Because that's a position with that upper right position uh, where white might be playing. Let's just mark the 2 2 point. White might be playing at some point here to try to make a, a living shape or a core something in the corner. Um, this could um, have be related to what happens on the upper side. So it, it could make a difference there. So white's trying to get some extra Aji. Um, it's very unlikely that white's going to survive with this cut. White's just trying to make things bad for black. And you can see all of those marked stones that I. The black stones are sort of in Dame Zamari, they're in a short of, of liberties. So white's trying to make use of that. So black extends. Um, this move accomplishes um, something by extending the liberties for these two black stones. So it's uh, making those stones pretty healthy. And it's also uh, setting up a potential connection underneath here. Um, so black can connect on the second line with the next move. Uh, so that's that's sort of a safe move. White answers here, and black blocks up. So black still has the connection at A, and we'll be able to win a, a, a race to capture. We'll be able to win a semi-I on the other side. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that's mostly because black has played the, the vital point here. This is extending black's liberties. So white gets to push from the... So the, um, what white has accomplished is this push is much more effective, and black has to be very careful about the the lack of liberties in black's shape there. So black is just extending. And white pushes once more. And now black extends in the center. And so this is actually very Mm. similar uh, to what white did, because uh, from black's viewpoint also, um, it's sort of scary to be extending here. Like these two stones, you don't really know if they're going to be saved or not. Um, It seems likely that white's going to capture these two stones. Um, but again, um, 
a strong player would sort of have the instinct, although it's, again, it's very hard to calculate this kind of thing. A strong player would have the instinct that um, black's going to get forcing moves from the left or right at the very least. So it's, it's sort of worthwhile um, extending here um, when the other option is to have, if white gets to play at this point at some point, it would just just have such good odds. White black would have no forcing moves left. So it's white blacks. Um, just judging from what happens from here on, I, I think black is just trying to get some extra forcing moves. Mm -hmm. So white answers. Um, black pushes. This is threatening white. Um, white's connection. So white answers that. And black adds a stone. So now this this is sort of handling um, the upper side position as well as the odds of white's honey here. So this this is a double purpose move that takes away the marked honey here because black will just cut that stone off if white plays there. Right. At the same time as uh, settling the position on the upper side, so this is finished off that those two white stones, um, and also finished off the black territory. So white gets to play in the center, and it looks like we're sort of headed into the end game. So this is where, with AlphaGo's games, it's sort of where things go a bit crazy. Um, they get hairy. Things get hairy. Yeah. So this is sort of um, at this point, it it makes a lot of sense. Like this move. Um, again, it's a case where black is trying to make use of that cutting stone, the marked cutting stone. Mm -hmm. And the object of black's play here is to um, to surround the left side, to make a, a some territory on the left side. While so this attack, is while attacking, right? It's a very sensible, uh, like trying to save the the two stones would be an overplay. So it, it makes sense for black to be playing from the outside here, and reinforcing the left side. Um, and again. Black saying, I'm going to jump into the center. Black's getting rid of the cut, the potential cut at A, uh, because as you might note, there's white has forcing moves in the vicinity of this triangle. So um, there is a real danger of white's cutting at A. So black's getting rid of that. Uh, obviously, this is a forcing move against white's center. Um, it wouldn't do for black to jump into the center. So now black um, is safe with these two stones. Black is starting to make a seki shape in the corner. But again, you know, AlphaGo doesn't always follow through. So it stops here. Um, so again, you, you might think it's a kind of a, a case of AlphaGo playing games with me. But there's a very um, practical reason um, that sometimes it's good for Black not to be playing this final move. Uh, let's mark it. Uh, just to show you, this final move here, mm -hmm. which would be forcing it. Why would I answer it? By taking the one stone. Yeah. Um, it actually reduces the number of liberties. And I'm going to show you that um, later when black gets into a fight with white on the lower side. So, so you can see that things are going to get exciting here. Oh, uh, when, get, when black me, gets let into let the fight. Them. I'm going to buckle my seatbelts here. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of uh, surprising maybe to you that uh, something's going to happen on the lower side. It looks like it's finished, doesn't it? It does. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, the point is that even if, uh, so like, let's just have a uh, start with a hypothetical position here um, just to make it so um, it's so it's like this white has answered here and black is extended here in the game white uh, now played here and black played here you would usually expect white to be uh, adding one more stone here because it looks a bit dangerous but actually what white did was white played away this is a big move too Mm. And you can see that the fact that um, just playing very peacefully would probably lead to a win. I'll, I'll get into that later. But just to add a variation here, let's let's say hy um, hypothetically that uh, White's in a bad position. I, I, knew you could, I knew you could get there. Yeah. And let's just count how many liberties Black has in the corner. And so there's, there's um, one move here and two moves here, but then Black can take the co- and you can see that the third move depends on a co in the corner. So black has four liberties, but white has to find, fight a co in the corner to get there. Do you follow me? Yeah, it's complicated. And so in this, it's just so because I thought that I thought that was done, and it's not. Yeah, it's not done. It, well, it's, um, the way I'm showing it is very hypothetical. It's not not actually going to happen. Right. But um, we're going to get there in the in the game. Okay. But All the right. point I'm trying to make is that, like. Um, if, if, if Black had already played this exchange and done the same thing, then it would be just a very simple loss for Black. Black only has two, two liberties left at this point. Right, 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 right. But if Black has not played that move and they have the same sequence, 
then we get to the same point in the sequence. Black has only two liberties after all, but there's actually a co-connected to it, which makes it more troublesome for white. So that, that's the point um, that I'm going to be making later to say that it's actually, although black played to this point, black is actually, um, wasn't just trying to set up the sekius, the correct sequence to set up the seki there. Uh, but there's also the, um, the Adzi at C that Black is sort of aiming at, mm -hmm. just to warn you. And so there's a very I real see. reason for Black not to be playing that mark point, because as, as I showed you, it's the same number of liberties that Black has in the corner, but in this variation, there's a, there's a co-attached to that. You, you, and, love, you love this stuff, don't you? Yeah, you do. <laughs> well, I love it when, you know, it, it's showing, I, I can find out that actually AlphaGo had a very good reason not to play. Right. Um, when it, And it plays away from shapes that uh, some people would think were really important. Like if you count that white group and that black group, and maybe you're not sure exactly what's going to happen in this corner, uh -huh. it looks like it's worth something like 40 or 50 points maybe. Right. So a lot of people would be really worried at this point and, and really want to play it out, especially a weaker player. Uh, yeah, maybe you too. But <laughs> would really want to play it out just to make sure that it's a seki after all. Yeah, right. would. Yeah. And so there's that tendency which AlphaGo doesn't have at all, of course, but yeah, right. um, it's not just that, but actually AlphaGo has a very practical reason for stopping at this point, which we're going to see later in the game. All right. Okay, so white is threatening, not only is white invading the black territory here, but this, this black group in the lower left looks a bit um, dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of weak points that white can make, take, make use of to strengthen this zone. Like there's the cut here, um, and there's, there's a weak that. point here. And so yeah. there's... And of course, there's white will be starting by looking at this move. So there's all these weak points in black's position that make it possible for white to take a fairly aggressive stance on the left side here when white plays. It That's would a be a good play. place for black to be playing, yeah. For instance, um, if white had answered here, um, this would be a very safe move. We would be heading straight into the end game. Um, black would probably just play something like this. Um, black has to be pretty conservative here on the yeah. left side. Black would just play something on the fourth line. <laughs> You know, there would be the tendency to try to <coughs> expand that territory out into the sixth line or something, but that looks a bit dangerous to me. Mm -hmm. So I'd say Black just plays on the fourth line here, and it looks like Black can win the game. I think this is a small lead for Black. And so White jumps in, and, you know, again, this is a point where most players, including myself probably, would be worried about what happens to Black on the left side. Uh, but AlphaGo just pushes through here. This is an important move, actually. Wow. And of course, um, White still wants to save uh, the position here. So some local move would be the normal thing, but again, White just ignores it. Um, so now Black's group on the left side, um, it's not completely dead yet, but if White gets to play, and for, for White's group, White's group is just okay now because White can push through at B or A. Cutting at A would settle the group too. So even if Black um, plays first on the left side now, there's no way that Black's going to be attacking White. Um, of course, they, they play away from positions a lot, so that, right. that could change at moment's notice. But at this point, um, white is definitely uh, um, taking the aggressive here on the left side. I think I could still live with black if black plays first, because there's still a lot of potential connections up to the upper left corner. Uh -huh. But, you yeah, know, AlphaGo is not going to do that. Uh, so it jumps in here, and white covers. This seems to make sense. And this is threatening to uh, connect up with the black group. So white plays, um, white plays away, obviously. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's so it's sort of confusing to me too. Like you would expect white to play here, um, and black will probably just push through here. And like if everything is peaceful, it's still a bit of trouble. And um, this is one thing. This is the simpler way that black is going to make use of this Aji on the lower side. So this is the easy one. Black plays Atari here. And you can see it's going to be trouble for white if white connects. Let's just mm -hmm. do that one, just to make it obvious. Um, if white connects, this is bad. Again, it's the position. Oh, sorry. Uh, what am I doing? If white connects here, it's going to be bad because white cannot cut on the third line now. White would have to go after mm -hmm. the corner. And again, it's going to be a co, which is, is a good result for black. So white's going to answer here. Wow. That's, that's the best answer for white. And black will be able to make a seki again. And now you see it's a seki with a co-attached. And so we don't know what's going to happen in that corner. 
And we're not going to know for a while now, because uh, that Seki there, um, black can start filling white's liberties um, and make it not a Seki anymore. Let, let's just uh, do a random move for white just to show you what I'm talking about. Like white, this would be a big move for white. Um, black plays here. Um, and they're going to fight this Ko. Uh, let's just have them fight the Ko. And black has to fight, keep on fighting this Ko. Eventually, black will be able to play here. And again, you can see that the worst result for black is just going to be a Seki. But if black gets to play one more move, it, it took black two moves to set this up. But once black plays here, this is a double Ko to kill, kill the white group. So mm. it's already dead. Like white can, white can play a Ko threat. And um, and get back to the call, but black just takes the other call. So um, uh, this is just dead. Whether whatever country you're, yeah. it, 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 there's no difference between even the Japanese and Chinese rules. It's dead anyway. Right, right, right. Yeah. So so there's that's a two-step code to get to this point. So it's black has to make two approach moves, and eventually will kill this white group with a double call. And so it's more than a seki for black. And the point is, it's going to stay that way. Okay, okay. I'm getting into the fun variations here. <laughs> um, it's going to stay that way. OK, let's see, where am I? So this is the game position, white answered. And um, so so you would have expected white to be finishing off the, this is pretty dead now. I think black's going to lose the corner. And um, black pushes through here and gets the seki. So what with this? Like, this is the seki position. Um, up to this point. And, and if we assume the two marked groups, there's a, a marked black group in the lower left and a marked white group in the upper right. Right. Um, if both tries, if both sides really try to kill them, they're probably both going to die. Mm -hmm. And so the game is pretty close, actually. And a lot will depend on what happens with this position in the in the lower right, lower right area, where black has some potential to capture white. So this would be maybe OK for black. So white doesn't do that. White plays here first. And this is a very troublesome move. It's a kind of a annoying move for black because black would like to be able to kill it. And we get into this kind of thing. Um, aye, aye, aye. White has, now white is threatening A and white is threatening actually B as, as the position is right now, B is the latter. Uh, like if you have black played here. The short ladder too. Uh, white can just play play this forcing move, and it's it's a ladder. Right. If you have black play, um, actually playing here is slightly better, but this is still a ladder. Um, because when white plays here, this is threatening four stones on the left. So black can capture these stones, but will lose these stones. Sweet. So this is really, really troublesome. Very clever. That's very clever. And actually, again, this is kind of, I'll leave this as a kind of a challenge to players because um, I, I, I wouldn't want to get into this position with black. But um, there is one move that, um, just looking at, at it very locally, there is a move that black could play, for instance. Black could try playing this, which would uh, make it a bit more difficult for white to take advantage of what's happening here. Mm -hmm. um, but this is really, really complicated. Like I, I tried to make a variation for this. Like a, if I made it, it would have to be something like ten to fifteen variations, and I, wow. I would, I would get confused. So I, I, <laughs> I, like sometimes I like to confuse you, but um, when I'm confused, it just gets I get lost. So, <laughs> so I'm, yeah, I'm not. But, then, but that. then we're both confused. Yeah, then we're both confused. That that wouldn't be much of a commentary though. <laughs> um, so Maybe. it might be entertaining though. Yeah, so people who like to work out positions like this could could try to figure out what happens when black plays here. Um, but I should warn people that you need you're going to need a lot of time to mm -hmm. play with it. And 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 there's a lot of issues like what happens with this stone. And at the best for black, there's going to be like 20 to 30 co threats here for white. So that's going to change what happens in the in the various codes that could happen in in these AlphaGo games. There's a number of places where codes could happen actually. Mm -hmm. And so black, instead of trying to kill it, uh, black just leaves the position. So this is, black pushes through here. This is a move that makes sense. And white makes a life. So once white has spent one move like this to make a living state, uh, now white's not going to play a co here because it's alive already. And so white lives with this sequence. 
And as we will see in the game, white is actually um, setting up to save that marked stone. So the, the two stones, I should say. Um, these two stones, white setting up to save them. So it's a very big move. Um, but of course, now what is happening in the center? Yeah, I was wondering about that. Those uh, white stones were looking a little, a mm -hmm. little dodgy. Well, you know, um, it doesn't really look like it's supposed to work when white plays here, does it? No. There's still a bit of distance between the two black. There, there is, yeah. So black pushes through here once and pushes here. So how is it working? Um, so I'm going to show you the simple variation of what happens when white extends here. Uh, when white extends here, obviously this is forcing, and now the lower side is falling apart. So this is a position where, again, as I was saying before, it's actually better for not for black not to have that move in because um, now white is going to fill a liberty here. And we get into this fight where white has, next next move, black's going to put white in Atari. So white has to win this call. So it's again a position where if black had played that move in the corner, let's just make a variation where black plays the move in the corner. If black had played this, then this would be a one move win for white. Well, something like this. Hmm. Um, but, but the fact that black has not played that exchange gives black an extra co in there. And of course, blacks trash the whole lower side. So um, a co is uh, perfect for black. Blacks gained a lot of territory on the lower side. So this would be a win for black. So white doesn't play the extension, but Hane. So now this is sort of turning into a, a fight between white's group in the center and black's group in the center. So who do you think is going to win? I don't know. It feels I I liked black, but it's feeling good for white to me. A lot of things could happen here. Like it it could be another seki. Mm -hmm. Um so let's do that one. So okay. if black play this this seems to be the best move locally. There's a lot of options that black has actually, but this seems to be the best move. And white probably will push through here and we'll get into this variation. And this is actually a pretty nice squeeze for black. And we're going to end up with another Seki. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that is so, so cool. Is this, is this the, the game? This is the no. actual game? No, no they're not going to do that. Nothing as simple as that. Of course, no. Um, there are two issues with this, because the first problem is that um, actually white's not going to play this to end because there's this huge move at B. So after black plays at A, which sets up this, this sequence to the Seki, so that, that's, that's back. Black has to get this far to make it worthwhile having played this sequence, at least this far. So at this point, we're sort of headed to the Seki. But at some point in the sequence, white is going to just play away and say, go ahead and take those stones in the center. They're just something like 20. It's 12 stones. It's 24 points. Okay. That's, that's tiny compared to B. B is a big move. B is it's, huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah, yeah. So, yeah, massive. So, Problem number one is that white is not going to cooperate in playing this to the final move, and black's going to end up spending two moves to take these 24 points in the center while white kills black on the left side. So that's, that's a bad variation for black, actually. There's another problem, which is going to be hard to believe, but actually, um, just look at this position on the board. Um, white's alive in the upper right corner, so that area is sort of starting to enter the end game. But uh, there's a lot of questions on the lower half of the board. So there's this black group in the center here. Let's just mark the, th this group here, the four stones. There's this group on the left side in the lower left corner. And there's this sort of pending seki here that could turn into a ko, as I showed you. It, it's a seki, uh, but black has potential to have right. an, a slight advantage there. So there's these three isolated uh, situations. Uh, that don't really have anything to do with each other, right? I mean, it's just getting more and more complicated. I was it's... just trying to uh, trick you into agreeing with me because yeah. actually they're, they're interconnected. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and so that's the other drawback from actually doing this because this would simplify the position 
and take away all of the connections to the black group in the lower left and black group in the lower right. Oh, okay. And okay. so, and that is sort of, um, it's defined by black's next move, which is here. So what is black doing with this move? Um, this is where you're going to see me um, try to connect up these three isolated positions, okay. seemingly, seemingly isolated. Right. So obviously white's going to uh, cover here, right? Of course, right. Um, well, of course not, but um, this is where I would probably play. <laughs> uh, and black cuts. And so white sort of wants to connect at B, because if white plays at C, black's going to get a cut at B, and it's going to be able to live in the corner. Sure, uh, sure. You want to do that as a variation? I guess we could do it as a ver uh, I could add a variation just for the video. I don't think I, I don't want to leave this variation in the SCF file because it would it, it would get very cluttered up. I just cluttered it up already. So, but this way, black just gets more, in the more corner. Cluttered. Um, it's it's just it's a um, it's a living shape in the corner. So this right, is going right, to be okay right. for black. So white sort of wants to connect on the left, and now black's going to peep here. Um, obviously, black doesn't want to allow white to push through here. I mean, white doesn't want to allow black to push. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so here. And now we switch to the lower left. Whoa! Uh, white's not going to let black, black capture the whole left, lower lower right. I mean, and now now it's going to um, it's going to connect up here with this move. At this point, it should be pretty obvious. Yeah, uh, white, I almost connects. saw that coming. I, I had a yes. And you can see I sort of uh, cutely set it up so that white cannot save the two stones because if white right, pushes right, right. through, it's just a squeeze from the outside. So so that's yeah. what. That's what this move was doing uh, when I just sort of uh, slipped that in one there. in. And there was, there's no um, no way for white to avoid this after it gets started, like, because um, white white cannot afford to give up. Uh, like at this point, white cannot afford to give up the whole, whole, whole lower right corner. That would be too big. Right. White doesn't really have any options. White white's move, uh, moves are mostly forced. Uh, white cannot sacrifice the whole center. But it's dead now. So um, once this gets started, it, it gets a kind of a momentum, and it gets harder and harder for white to play away. And so that's the second reason for black not fixing the shape in the center there, because it, um, black needs to have it set up as it is mm -hmm. to make this thing work. So this is um, one of the more challenging parts of the game, where at first I couldn't um, imagine why White had just ignored that move. Um, white played away. And actually, this, locally, this is a very effective move, and it's, it's sort of a sente move. Of course, Black, black doesn't let it um, be forcing, but uh, this is a move that saves the white stones. That means yeah. that the mark, the mark Black group is in danger. Yeah. I can capture it with a move at B. And that's worth about 30 points. So that's a, a huge move. Uh, so there's this. Has that been beat. there? Has that been there all along? Well, once White lived in the corner, uh, White had this potential connection. But of course, Black can play it. Um, black can play it um, at E two. Black can play here to connect up to the side. So it's, it's sure. just it's just territory. It's, right. it's some added value for White uh, living with this group. So so when White lived in the corner, Black got White had this added value to that to be able to save these stones. It's not as if black's going to die, except that in actual practice, black leaves it for a while, so maybe black will die. But it's 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 leaving a huge move. Um, normally, you would expect this to be forcing for white, but of course, we have these big things happening on the lower side too. So black is now um, there's so many big moves all over the place that it's sort of bewildering. But black plays once from the corner and now plays the honey. And again, at this point, the lower right corner. Has lost its significance. It's 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 smaller than it was before, but um, it's going to fit into the puzzle later on. So for the time being, the lower left corner was still very important. So black added a stone there, and now white um, this wins the semi in the center. So things are gradually um, getting clean cleaned up. You might say. Black takes the co once. And now this is something like 20, 25 points, so it's tiny, right? Like it's not as big as the move at B. Um, oh, yeah, 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 saving the stones, right? Yeah, playing at A. This is making a seki in the corner. Um, so it, it's 
it makes a Seki in a position where White could have captured this this corner group, this right. black group in the corner. It's right. about 25 points. So as far as territory is concerned, it's not as big as B. Yeah, B seems uh, a lot, lot bigger. It's a lot bigger, but actually Black has a good reason, which is this Mark group that I've, um, the Mark group, the White group. The fact that Black has made a life here in the corner, or a Seki, you might say, it means that White has to worry about those stones on the outside. And that's going to be demonstrated pretty soon when black plays here, which is already putting pressure on the white group. And so there's the added value that now white is forced to play a move like this. Um, and that makes it worthwhile for black to have saved the lower right corner. So that was the added value to that move. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now black saves the upper side and white plays on the right side. Um, and actually if white can continue with a move at B, uh, White's going to have an advantage in this. It's it's going to be pretty much dead. It's 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 another cold situation. But if White plays at B first, um, it's going to be bad for Black. Let, let's just show show you that variation. Um, if White plays here, um, move the idea number one would be to cover here, but Black has to go back and protect the cut. Uh, so if Black protects the cut, White just makes two eyes. So this would right. be variation number one. So that means maybe Black has to back off a little bit. But that means white has a lot of extra liberties. White can start playing the call. Um, like for something like this, black would just not have enough room uh, to catch up. So white would win the semi. -air. So it's a kind of a, this would be when black does this one, it's going to be a one sided co, which is going to be really difficult for black to win. So and obviously again, that's not what he does. That's, well, if white gets to play here first, it's going to be something like that. Mm hmm. So it's a really big move. It's going, to, it's going to be a one-sided code. It's not going to be outright dead. So it's going to take a lot of moves to white to kill it. So maybe it's slightly better than just being dead, which is what would have happened before black started doing this stuff in the, in the lower right. Um, but it's interesting that black sort of leaves it for a while. Actually, black B here is, um, it's a forcing move. It's threatening to kill white in the corner. And this left side, this position on the left side is not completely settled yet. So black continues with this. And white has to add a stone to that group. Obviously, it plays away. <laughs> Again, this revives the thirty move, the thirty point move on the upper side. So right. it's sort of it's sort of dizzy. There we go. There's there we around go. that. Yeah. And now white adds a stone to the left side. So that's what was happening with black's moves here, and black has reinforced the group um, in the lower left corner. So black plays here once, and then uh, okay. And so we have this sequence here. Uh, it's sort of confusing, but we'll just assume that uh, there were some good reasons for the moves. And finally, black plays here. <laughs> so now this is really a Seki position. It's a Seki. The best result for white is a Seki in the lower right corner. And um, and black does have that court A, which can potentially kill the white group. Black's group on the lower side, um, you probably don't see two eyes yet, but it's pretty much alive. So white plays pretty, here. Pretty much alive. Yeah, it's it's in actual practice, it's alive. Um, white covers here. This actually is uh, a move that threatens to push through at sure. A yeah, and yeah, cut yeah. black. So black answers that. And white covers here, and this is the biggest move. And then white jumps once. Okay, so um, actually this position in the center, um, white was still in danger of getting squeezed. So this connection here, which um, makes it a position where white has eye, uh, an eye, uh, a big eye, actually, and black doesn't have any eyes. It, it makes it a position where white's pretty safe now. So that was a big move as far as territory was concerned. Okay. Although white was winning the semi already. This is forcing against the corner, so white answers that. We're finally settling down to an end game. Uh, and is there, is there, is there, is well, there another, you know, another shoe that's going to drop? No, it's just the final result that is okay. different depending on what rule set you use. Okay. All right. um, you so see this how distrustful actually, I get. I get so... Yeah, yeah. You're, I you're, feel like you have you're wondering more what's going to happen next, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah well, this yeah. looks a bit strange, but it's not really losing very much because if black had connected on the first line, there would still at the very least be this forcing move for white here. Sure. Threatening to cut. So that's a pretty important... It changes the number uh, of moves white has to play inside white's territory. So this makes sense, actually. Um, and we finish the game. So let's get to the end of the game. Um, there's going to be that code that I was talking about, 
which is going to make the end game a bit more exciting. And you can see Black has already filled one of the liberties. Uh, Black starts the code with this move at A. And so we're fighting the code here. And Black goes back to playing territory moves. The game is relatively close, but White actually, um, as I told you, it's, it's going to be a different result depending on um, what rules that you use. Hmm. Um, and the play here is actually, um, it looks correct to me. Um, it all it all is, um, like this move obviously is, is bad, right? But it, it has to do with the code. It's just the um, Black's trying to, to make enough code threats to have some success in this code in the lower right corner. Um, so, so locally, it's a bad move, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it's a point loser. Mm -hmm. um, and so when Black plays here, White finally connects the code. And now it's really a seki. And uh, they're playing a correct endgame here. Um, and, and White's redeeming point is that capturing these two stones is the final big move on the board. And so although White lost a lot of territory on the left side when Black played today, White's getting a, a five-point move at B. So it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's the best White could do, I guess. And you can see how being able to push through here, uh, this is, um, as I was saying before, it's important because this is going to enable Black to force White to put an extra stone in later. Hmm. And so it's a very straightforward end game after this. Um, they do a bit of strange stuff, um, but you know that's just alpha goal. Um, there's this 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 point where um, White starts with this almost co threat like move, and then um, this trade, which uh, looks like Black's going to fight a co on the left side, but it says no, it's not, and it's it's actually an even trade. Wow. Um, so it's okay. And you can see um, Black filling the wrong liberty here. That's just something that AlphaGo likes to do too. It doesn't make any difference in the end result. Um, from the human viewpoint, Black, had, Black did not need to play this liberty, which would usually be used as a, right. a co threat later. Right, right, right. Um, but, you know, AlphaGo just seems to love to do the wrong thing when it doesn't make any difference in the end result. <laughs> it's not wrong by AlphaGo's definition. Okay, so we're finishing the game, and um, this is in the actual game sequence. It just finishes and says that Black wins by a fourth of a stone. Okay, um, and that's a very unusual difference because usually in the Chinese rules, when you're counting the stones, Black uh, the the smallest um, margin that Black wins by is. Uh, three-fourths of a stone. And that, in the Japanese rules, the point-counting rules, that's translated to uh, one-and-a-half points. Uh, but when you count this with the Japanese rules, actually, white is going to win by half a point. So um, in the Chinese rules, you're, it's, they're saying that black won by one-fourth of a stone, and that's the rules that this program is using. Um, but in the Japanese rules, you say the territory... Um, black only wins by seven points on the board. So white's going to win by half a point. Mm -hmm. So what happens here is that, um, well, if you don't do the math kind of thing, then um, it's sort of hard to explain. But um, in that case, just you can just trust me that when white wins by um, half a point, uh, that means that black has won by seven points, right? In this mm -hmm. case, it's a mm -hmm. seven and a half point for me. Um, it means that White has played played the final dame. Because if you because if Black has won by seven points, that means you have an odd number of territory. Um, the total amount of territory is an odd number. Right. It means the number of stones on the board is an even number. It means that White has played the final move. It, it's well. There's a couple things that confuse me about this. Um, I mean, these, these, you know, quarter of a point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, like it, um, the, the reason that the Chinese rules have a different number result than the Japanese rules is because, um, basically they're comparing, um, the player's result, like white's result would be, um, something close to 180 or 181. And they're comparing that to 
half of the board, which is 180 and a half. Like half of 361 is 180 and a half. Right. And so, so you have a fraction in there, and um, you're comparing it to that. Um, and it's just three and three fourths stones. Um, and so everything is halved compared to the Japanese rules. It, you, right. You have to half the numbers. Um, and so, like, it's sort of complicated to explain, especially when I can't do do stuff like that with the Go board. But the um, the basic truth is that white is going to play the final dame. And because you count the stones, the fact that white plays that final dame um, makes the difference between white winning and losing. Wow. When white is winning. And white usually wins by just a, a fourth of a point. And, and so playing, and the dame I'm talking about here is this point, this little triangle uh, T3 on the, in the lower right part of the board. Uh, because when you have a seki, like this and it's not le it's well i guess it would be legal but it's it's practically you can't play that point N neither side can play that point yeah right? right 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 so it's a point that it's no one's territory and you can't fill it with a stone either and wow. so with the chinese rules um when you're getting the same results as the japanese rules and in almost all of the games that you play um you're going to have points that you can fill with stones and some of those points are going to be territory, and some of them are going to be in between the players' territories. Dame points, as the Japanese would call them, um, that you can fill with stones. But when you have a seki like this, in which case both sides have an eye, you have a point here that neither side can fill. Can, can claim. Right. So it's it, in the Chinese rules, they, um, they share the point. It's half and a half. That's right. That's right. Yes. And so... <laughs> Yeah, I should just leave it there. So that that's why um, in this particular case you're getting a very unusual uh, win margin, and it straddles the difference. Like it, it it makes the difference between a win and a loss in the Chinese rules. Wow, I've heard I've heard from those who know such things that it, that this is possible, but I don't know that I'd ever seen it. You well, know, you know, the, even having a seki like this to make the one point uh, the it's a half stone difference. Mm -hmm. from what you would usually expect. It's a half stone difference. Having the seki itself is an unusual position. Yeah. And yeah. then having the game um, depend on it is very, very rare. Right. But of course, AlphaGo just loves to make these close games. And, yeah. Uh, I sort of sneakingly um, sus I'm suspicious that it's doing it on purpose sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, but, yeah. That could be it us just projecting, but I don't think Yeah, it well, at the very least, it doesn't care. It doesn't right. matter whether it's winning by 100 points or half a point, as the deep mind team will tell us. Right. And so I, I actually filled the dame for us in a variation. I think I did a variation just, or two. Just to, clean, just to clean it up. Yeah, to, to show you how you end up with uh, with an, an in-game an in with just one, one point that no player can claim here. Wow. Right here. Right so I tried filling, and you can see that black filled the final dame. And according to the Japanese rules, white's winning by half a point. So in that you case, say, white would be... black. black filled the final dame? Or white? Right, well, well, black played the final move here. And I after know. this, it's there just... Is. Okay. Um, theoretically, they can, could, could continue playing moves inside their own territory. But um, in actual practice, even with the Chinese rules, you usually just stop here. Mm. Um, well, you know, I think f folks... Uh, those those uh, folks watching who have played in tournaments know that you know none of this matters until it does, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know? Like if you could play a whole tournament and you wouldn't have a game that um, had this kind of case. Right, right. You can yeah. play many tournaments and not see mm -hmm. this until you know until it happens. Yeah, until it happens. Yeah. So, but just at that point, you just better hope you have a really good TD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, in this case, it's just a, a half of a stone difference. It's a, right. And so, like, it's a, the Japanese would say it's a one point difference. Right. Right. Wow. Well, that's a fun, fun game. I mean, especially the uh, the part in the in the uh, the late middle when, you know, as as usual, it seems like things are settling down and then. Uh, it's not <clears throat> exciting, yeah. All hell breaks loose. So. And I'd really like to see how all of the, those three seemingly isolated positions were sort of interconnected. That was really cool. Thank you for thank you for figuring that out so nicely. All right. It was very pleasurable.
Thank you, Michael. And all right, folks, uh, just before we finish up here, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as as much as uh, as we have. Uh, maybe just as a, just a little taste of how much Michael enjoyed that. He's working hard for you. Uh, just another big, big thanks to all of our AGA members out there. We really appreciate you folks, uh, all that you do to, to make videos like this possible and, and a lot of other cool stuff. Uh, for the American Go Association. And uh, and if you'd like to consider supporting this content as well, and and we really, we really hope you do, because uh, we want to keep going with this and uh, it, takes, it takes support. So please consider joining the American Go Association. You can check us out at usgo.org. Lots more cool stuff there. And we'll see you all next week.